Hello everyone, happy uh, Tuesday for Telesur. I'm Cody Weddle in Caracas, uh, Venezuela. To begin today, the Mercosur trading bloc, which gathers South America's main economies, held their annual summit in Paraguay. Now, the summit was the first to be attended by new Argentinian president, Mauricio Macri, who had previously announced his intention of suspending Venezuela from, from the bloc. Now, during the summit, he criticized Caracas over human rights ab abuses but said he will not attempt to suspend the country. Now, Venezuela's foreign minister pointed out that Macri and his party have consistently opposed human rights trials against former collaborators of the military dictatorship. I understand that President Macri wants to demand the freedom of those violent people. I understand it because one of his first announcements has been to free those responsible for torture, disappearances and murders under the Argentine dictatorship. In an important breakthrough there, the bloc agreed to begin negotiations on a free trade agreement with the European Union. Now, the issue has sparked some controversy in the past regarding the demands made by the EU in the previous negotiation attempts. However, Mercosur members agreed that it was time to move forward and relaunch negotiations. In order not to be victims of the future, we need to be protagonists of the present. For this reason, we are ready and willing to soon exchange the lists of proposals with the European Union and to start the corresponding negotiations. For this reason, I'm taking advantage of the presence in this meeting of our dear friend, colleague and President of Chile, the country that will assume the pro tempore presidency of the Pacific Alliance to say we want to get involved in this project. And one thing was clear from Monday's Mercosur pre uh, summit, Argentinian President Mauricio Macri will try to push his political agenda within that bloc. Now to explain Macri's role and his plans there in Mercosur, we turn, turn to our correspondent in Buenos Aires, Laureano Ponce. The rise to power of the right in Argentina has brought up several questions about the role the country will play in Latin America. While under the Front for Victory governments, the country was one of the promoters of regional integration initiatives like the Southern Common Market or Mercosur, the new president, Mauricio Macri, has anticipated he will look towards a different direction. The world of the first century offers a variety of choices, and there is no reason for us to limit ourselves when it comes to negotiating and putting our common interests before the world. And I am also thinking about our partners in the Pacific Alliance to capitalize the biocenic dimension of a region. Macri's officials remain careful about their views on Mercosur, especially since Brazil remains Argentina's largest trading partner. However, ideas like promoting free trade agreements have started to come up more often in government officials' comments. There is a strategic geopolitical issue that Argentina was developing in recent years, which is strengthening the South-South trade partnership and a pro-BRICS orientation. This will now change significantly as the new government starts seeking for free trade agreements and building closer ties to the Pacific Axis. Despite Argentina's turn to a pro-US oriented foreign policy under Macri, many believe the region will continue along the path of integration. Macri is in a very complex position because there are still many anti-neoliberal governments in office and especially Bolivia, Ecuador and Venezuela itself are assuming that role within Mercosur. Analysts believe Macri's proposal of negotiating a free trade agreement between Mercosur and the Pacific Alliance or with the European Union would benefit Argentina's exporting sectors laid by big landowners while destroying small businesses and local jobs. Laureano Ponce, Telesur, Buenos Aires. After weeks of protests in Haiti, electoral authorities there have decided to postpone the date of the much-anticipated runoff election there. Now, the new date was set for the second week of January of 2016. Parties and activists continue to protest what they consider was a fraudulent election in October, which would have benefited the ruling party. Unrest is expected to continue despite that announcement. And now uh, Brazil's president, Dilma Rousseff, has sworn in the new finance minister, Nelson Barbosa. 
It comes after former minister Joachim Levy resigned last week. Now Barbosa promised to bring financial stability to the country, which is facing a significant fiscal deficit. Barbosa also reassured investors that he would maintain current policies. However, markets continued following, fall falling despite the appointment of Barbosa. Over the weekend, uh, one of Mexico's leading figures in the Catholic Church expressed the institution's views on the growing public debate over the legalization of marijuana. Now, you remember this comes after a historic November Supreme Court ruling that ruled in favor of legalization of that drug. Our correspondent Clayton Kahn now reports there from Mexico. It was on Sunday that Mexico City's Catholic Archbishop Norberto Rivera gave his opinion in ultimately blessing for the legal medical use of marijuana. Regarding the proposal to allow the use of marijuana for medical purposes, the Catholic Church has no problem. The news from a historically conservative institution comes as a surprise for the country which is considered to be 85% Catholic, yet recreational marijuana users urge the national debate to go beyond simply medical use. The legalization of the use of marijuana carries a bad stigma on us consumers that don't need it for medical ends, but rather recreational. And the debate has taken off since four plaintiffs won a historic Supreme Court ruling in early November that recognizes that the penalization of marijuana use and cultivation violates their rights. Many legalization proponents say it is now time to fully regulate the consumption of the drug. And there are obviously pros and cons. Here the cons are that one can abuse this. And the point of law will be to stop that. Also, it will be to avoid the clandestine sale to make the products commerce regulated. That is what we are seeking and that will be a good option or alternative. Also, activists and rights defenders argue that the continued penalization of the drug further promotes the spread of organized crime and systemic violence that comes in its wake. Since Mexico launched its so-called war on drugs in 2006, more than 26,000 people have disappeared and an estimated 100,000 killed. I believe that it puts at risk the human rights for an individual and in general. All that has happened in this general context of a human rights crisis and generalized violence that we suffer in the country. It is expected in January that Mexico Senate is to deliberate and begin debates over potential reforms that could lead to the legalization of the substance. Clayton Canta del Sur, Mexico City. Panama Supreme Court has ordered a detention warrant against former president Ricardo Martinelli. Now, the former president and business tycoon who is currently in Miami in the United States is facing over a dozen investigations on corruption charges. The arrest warrant was issued after the court reviewed accusations of a spying network used by Martinelli's government to follow opposition leaders, activists, politicians and civilians. To Bolivia now, where that country's fight to regain part of the Pacific coastline from Chile marked an important story, one of the most important stories there uh, this year. For a recap now, we turn to our correspondent, Dimitri O'Donnell. He's reporting from La Paz. It was the moment the entire country had been waiting for. And when the result was finally announced, there was an unprecedented outpouring of joy. In September, the International Court of Justice in The Hague agreed to hear the century-old dispute between Chile and Bolivia as La Paz tries to regain access to the Pacific. It is lovely news for us Bolivians, having hope that we are going to recover the sea. It's thrilling and such a great news for Bolivia. And thanks to the President, Evo Morales. Bolivia lost its coastline during the War of the Pacific with Chile in the late 19th century. Chile says a treaty signed in 1904 settled their borders and that Bolivia has no case. But President Morales disputes this. This is a historic day and a forgettable day for Bolivians. It's a big step forward in the lawsuit for our claim to the Pacific Ocean. Despite the celebrations, a final result is a long way off. The entire process in The Hague could take up to five years to resolve, and Chile is sticking to its position that the issue should be settled through direct talks, although it has yet to make any proposal to Bolivia to start official negotiations. Attention quickly turned from the fight for the Pacific to a domestic battle, this one focused on changing the constitution to end presidential term limits. 
After a marathon 18-hour session in November, Bolivia's Legislative Assembly approved the change. What a moment! What a wonderful moment! I believe that we are fortunate to be here for this historic moment. The opposition say both the law and the referendum is unconstitutional and accuse Morales of a power grab. For us this is absolutely unconstitutional and what's more, as the government is going to stay in power eternally, many things will not be clear up and so corruption is going to continue 100%. As this year draws to a close, the focus now for Bolivia's government is on getting the referendum passed on February 21st next year. The results will determine whether Morales and his vice president can run again for office in 2019. If he claims victory, Morales could become Bolivia's president for an unprecedented fourth time, staying in office until 2025. Dimitri O'Donnell, Telesur, at the Presidential Palace in La Paz. And after the break, a European country uh, has sent a small amount of troops to an Afghan province there, which is surrounded by Taliban forces. We'll explain when we come back. Washington, wherever the newsmakers will be there. From watch on TV.net slash English, Telesur, wherever the news, you'll be there. A world infinitely connected. Millions of people instantaneously interacting. Experiences relayed in 144 characters. Millions of lives in every corner of the planet. They're not tweets, they're stories. Watch it on TV.net slash English. Tell us, sir, wherever the news, you'll be there. The truth behind the power. We lift the lid on some of the world's most ruthless figures. Open file. Only on TV.net in English. Wherever the news, you'll be there. A grand jury in the U.S. state of Texas has decided not to issue any indictment relating to the death of Sandra Bland. You'll remember Bland is the African-American woman who died in a jail in what authorities say was a suicide, but others have claimed foul play. Now, 28-year-old Bland was pulled over in her car uh, by a state trooper for failing to signal a lane change. The stop escalated into an argument after the officer asked Bland to put out a cigarette, but she refused. Sandra Bland was arrested and charged with assaulting an officer. The, uh, three days later, she was found dead in her jail cell with a trash bag around her neck. Now, that was the official account, and the official account was that she committed suicide, but some family members have questioned uh, the official count and conduct. 200 policemen are still patrolling the surroundings of an Orthodox church in Ukraine. Now this, uh, after a Monday, members of the Ukrainian far-right movement, a right sector, tried to seize the temple where two Ukrainian Orthodox priests and several parishioners are living despite having no access to electricity or heating. Now the church belongs to the Moscow uh, Patriarch and, uh, and the conflict aroused around a year ago after a court refused to transfer it to the Kiev Patriarch. Britain has announced it has sent a small number of military personnel to the Afghan province, southern province of Helmand, whose capital Sangin is on the verge of falling to Taliban forces. Now, Helmand is a major center of opium cultivation in a traditional Taliban heartland, and it has been the scene of fierce fighting for months as the insurgents ramp up attacks. Although Britain ended combat operations in the country last year, it still has about 450 troops there to mentor and support the Afghan army and security forces. And in Iraq now, members of the counter-terrorist units have stormed the center of the western city of Ramadi, held by the self-named Islamic State Group, or Daesh, since May. Now, if the attack succeeds, it will be the second major city to be retaken from the Islamic State Group in the country after Tikrit in April. Daesh also controls Mosul, the second largest city, and Fallujah, which lies between Ramadi and Baghdad. Clashes in Yemen continue despite an extended truce between the Houthis and the Saudi-backed forces loyal to former President Mansour Adi. Uh, both parties accused each other of breaching the truce agreement. 
Other minor confrontations were registered throughout the country, mainly involving Saudi troops, which are fighting in support of pro Adi forces. An attempted attack by Islamist Somali group Al-Shabaab against a bus in Kenya was frustrated by a group of Muslims who stood up for their Christian companions. Now, the Islamist group responsible for the killing of 148 people at Garissa University College in April shot the bus traveling from Nairobi to Madeira near the Somali border and ordered the passengers to separate by Muslims and non-Muslims. Now, the Muslim travelers quickly helped the Christians to disguise and told the terrorists to kill them together or leave them all alone. Now, finally, the group just left, killing two people and injuring four. The United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees, Antonio Guterres, has urged the international community to reach a new agreement to help refugees fleeing war-torn nations such as Syria and Afghanistan. Now, Guterres addressed the UN Security Council as representatives from the council's members discussed the refugee crisis. According to new figures, the number of migrants and refugees entering Europe this year has surpassed one million people. The Greek parliament has voted to call the government for an official recognition of the state of Palestine. Now, this during the visit of Palestinian President Mahmoud Abbas, who addressing the parliament, remarked that he is still, way, is still willing to negotiate peace with Israel. He added that uh, Israel should stop the occupation of the Palestinian land. All countries in the world would then recognize the state of Israel. Our correspondent, Noor Harazin, now compiled uh, the feelings of some Palestinians. Today, the people of Palestine received a very good news as apparently uh, more and more countries are recognizing Palestine as a state. Uh, today, only a few hours ago, the Parliament of Greece has uh, officially recognized Palestine uh, as a state. Um, and also, the, the uh, Greek uh, Prime Minister said that, will, that they will not be using the word Palestinian Authority in their uh, formal uh, letters and transactions. They will be using the uh, Palestinian, the phrase of Palestinian uh, state. This news comes as a very happy news to the Palestinian people as they are saying more, more countries are standing by the side of the Palestinian people and supporting their right of existence. Chinese authorities continue the search for survivors after that landslide that covered a city in Shenzhen. Local media reported that vital signs have been registered through a scanning of the sites, the local government and the national government are concentrating rescue efforts in the sites where vital signs were spotted, meaning people may be there, making uh, saving lives there the priority. Despite initial reports of 91 people missing, the number had been reduced to 76. The search there continues. First, we need to locate the constructions to draw up the positions where the constructions collapsed. Secondly, search for vital signs. We use sniffing dogs and life sensors to accurately search for lives. Third, rescuers and machinery are adopted to excavate and dismantle the search for lives. Japan will hold the 2020 Summer Olympics and expectations are running pretty high there. Japan's Sport Council unveiled new plans for a stadium where the Olympics there will take place. The venue will be able to host 68,000 spectators and can be adapted to fit another 12,000. The design blends modern and traditional architecture and includes some green areas as well. The project will cost around $1.3 billion. And check this out. A new cafe has opened in Indonesia that hires people with hearing impairment. Now, sign language tip sheets are provided to the customers there of the Finger Talk Cafe, as it's called, a clever name there. Uh, the seven waiters, they can also read lips. Now, Indo Indonesian lawmakers are now seeking to renew the legal regulations to protect the rights of disabled people, aiming to provide, to provide more job opportunities for them. Currently, companies with over 100 employees must recruit, recruit at least 1% of disabled people. 
A pretty clever idea there. Good for them. Plenty more on all of those stories we reported to you and others at our website. TV.net slash English for Teleser English. I'm Cody Weddle. Have a great day.